What's up you guys, Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. Thank you for hanging out, watching, subscribing, all that stuff, thank you for the support. Uh, gonna break down Kiss from a Rose. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds, which is kind of like my favorite kind. Uh, so we'll zoom in, you need a capo on the third fret. Um, also, I appreciate you signing the newsletter at martymusic.com. First comment will take you there. Uh, let's learn this tune. All right, capo third fret, like I said, and most of the song revolves around three chords. And I even have a little trick where you can use the same shape for two of the chords. So let's start with the, uh, the key of the song. What, it, what it's revolving around is the E major chord. So two, two, one. And it's going one, two, three, one, two, three, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Up down, 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 up down. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So check this out. We got the E major chord. The next chord is a C major seven is what we would call it. Um, but there's this great little voicing you can use where you take this same shape and you just plant uh, the one, two, third fret up, ring finger there on the A string, index on the second fret of the D, and that is a C major seven chord but with a, a G in the bass. So it's like a slash chord, but it works really well. It gives you that moody sound that you want, especially if you're, you know, playing it by yourself. And you don't even have to change the shape of your hand. So E, C major 7, but this new, you know, easy but fancy chord. Then we need to go over to a D chord. But with the capo, I kind of think it sounds better with the middle finger off or to not play it, mute it. That bright high note is a little much for the moodiness of the song. But so the chorus is these three chords with that one, two, three, one, two, baby. I can do da 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 that one and that one. So it just repeats, you know, you can follow right along and hear it with the original recording. E, C major seven, D, and you could call it D add nine if you played it that way. I just don't like that bright note in there. Now, there's a cool part that I'm going to show you near the end of the lesson because it's more advanced. Still easier than it than it looks, um, but let's get to the uh, you know you got this verse. You can say. not going to be able to even come close to humming the melodies here. It's great vocal performance. But you, what you have is you have this E, C major 7, D, E, D, D, D. So it, it's an extra count on the second one. one. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, one, two, three, one, two. Three. 
So there's a little special thing that only happens one time. I'm going to show you that at the end too, because this is, we're going to take the beginner route and then make it more complex as we go. So really, we have the, we learn the chorus first, which is those three chords. The verse is the three chords as well, but it just holds for that when he goes, eh, da, da. Um, well, I'm not even gonna try. Da, da, da. Extra one, two, three, da, 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 da. And so then there's this, um, uh, when it snows. So, da, 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 da. so there's this little pre chorus that happens where it's an E major to E minor. And then you just do those uh, C to D, C. And I hope you understand that I'm calling this C. So my C to D, C to D, then the E, baby, you know. So after the first chorus, it goes back to the verse again, and it just does a little something different. It's the same chords, but just the arrangement changes a little bit. So he starts the same. Break, hey, you know, a little vocal thing. He goes, hey, hey, C, D, D, and then that same thing again, C, D, D, A, and when it snows, it goes into that, oh, and when it snows, my C becomes D, and my C becomes D, then the E. Okay. The other thing is the original recording is not in standard tuning either way. It's a little bit between this fret and this fret. It's not, if you're using a standard tuning, you're not gonna be able to, it's not gonna match perfectly with the recording. It was a little in between. That happens sometimes, especially with old tape recordings. So that's pretty much what we need for the song. There's a super weird bridge that, if you're playing this by yourself or a campfire kind of situation, sing along kind of situation, or even an open mic, you don't really have to play this part. It's very much a studio part, but you'd go up to here. So if this is zero, then you'd have one, two, three, four, five up with the A shape. So it's just this A shape, then on the same fret, the E shape, then a whole step down. And this is just that, voc all, it's vocals, but this would be what the chords are underneath. You know? But it feels really good when you go back to the E. Let me show you the couple of extra little things. Now, in the very first verse, he's playing it. Just a 
little weird thing that happens, so it's just going down the scale. It's open D, three, uh, uh, five, three on the A, open, same thing on the E, into that E chord. So now the part that I is really fun to play. First thing you want to do is, uh, and you know this is like extra credit, right? If you're a little more of an experienced player, you could probably uh, play this part. If you're a beginner, it's not really worth it yet to spend time with it. But by all means, watch along, follow along, play along. If you took a regular C chord and took your index finger off, that's a C major seven chord. What we were playing was this one. Same chord. We we're just adding. A lower note there, an inversion in the bass. Oops. So we're going to need it this way because of our extra fingers going on. So check it out. One, two, second fret up on the D to the fifth. Then that C major seven. Because we're going. But we're going to add the chord to it. So and then we add the second fret of that G. Check it out. And then back off within that chord. What I'm doing here is I'm playing a D major chord, but the inversion with this F sharp in the bass. It looks like this. I'm just kind of barring this little second fret cluster here. Middle finger's hitting that third fret of the B. And then ring finger is hitting the one, two, three, fourth fret of the D. So when you put that together, Take your ring finger off, and you're hitting that, and then open E major. And you can add it anytime you want, but it's really it's the, that little musical intro. And you can even add that. It's that E sus, you're adding the second fret of the G there. there it was. Thanks again for hanging out. Uh, if you haven't yet, I appreciate you subscribing here to Marty Music. You can leave your request in the comments below. And uh, like I said before, I appreciate you signing the newsletter at martymusic.com. Uh, hope to see you again real soon. See you later.